Hello and welcome back to another episode of Smart Recovery Series Tips and Tools for Recovery That Works. Recovery from any addictive behavior seems pretty daunting for most people. The easiest course of action is to do nothing about the problem, but doing nothing isn't an option anymore. You know you have to make a change. If your issue is alcohol, it can mean overhauling a whole professional, recreational, and social life centered around drinking. And if you're addicted to drugs, it means depriving yourself of a substance your body craves every day. So yeah, change is hard, but it's not impossible. In fact, people do it every day. And Smart Recovery has a nice roadmap you can follow to get there. And it's called the stages of change. So let's break it down. Stage one is pre-contemplation. You don't think you have a problem, you don't plan to quit anytime soon, but external pressures are mounting on you. Your spouse has maybe said something about it, maybe your boss has written you up for being late, your parents are threatening to cut you off, or you get your first DUI. Most people at this stage are living in a form of denial. The problem isn't their fault. They'll say, it's my genes, both my parents drank, or the breathalyzer was broken and a cop just had it out for me, or my all-time favorite, I totally have this under control. But as time goes on and the negative consequences of addiction mount, those excuses start to seem pretty lame. So now you move on to stage two, which is contemplation. You're not in denial anymore. You know a change is necessary. Maybe you've done some soul searching and had some talks with your spouse or friends or your boss or maybe even your kids. Maybe you've done a cost benefit analysis like the one that we showed you how to do in our last episode. Regardless of how you got to this point, you're getting ready to commit, to change, but you're not sure how. Well, for change to happen, you need a plan, which leads us to stage three, preparation. No more denial, no more excuses. You've decided that you want to quit drinking or gambling or sexting or taking drugs or overeating or maybe all of the above. You're ready to take your life back. And with this decision, you may feel a sense of liberation. Now you can envision a brighter future without that damn monkey on your back. You're putting the past behind you and you're evaluating possible solutions. Maybe it's inpatient or outpatient rehab, or maybe it's smart recovery meetings, which we highly recommend. And now for the most important part, stage four, you take action. You quit. Maybe you check yourself into rehab, you start going to mutual support meetings like Smart Recovery, or you get a psychiatrist or psychologist involved to help you dig deeper into the reasons you became addicted to begin with. Sounds great, but hold on, you're not done yet. Quitting is really just the start. For your recovery to stick, stage four also requires that you build a new life with a new purpose centered around healthy activities supported by friends who are on the same page as you are. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This part is hard, it's scary but it can also be the most rewarding experience of your life because breaking free from addiction finally allows you to evaluate your goals, your priorities, your needs, your fears. In essence, looking at your true self through a clear and unfiltered lens. You know, it's said that knowledge is power. Well, knowledge about yourself is power with a purpose, but don't rush this part either. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to recover the life you lost and rediscover the fun stuff you did before your addiction happened. It gives you a chance to uncover new strengths about yourself, new passions, don't regret the time that you lost to addiction. Focus on all the time you have now to dedicate to personal growth and to build long-term happiness. Now that you're back in control of your life, you have to keep it that way. So stage five is maintenance. The day-to-day -day work of continuing to build your confidence, dealing with urges, overcoming negative thoughts and emotions that test your will, and building a personal, family, social, and vocational life centered around sobriety. You might find that you still need to go to meetings once a week or maybe once in a while, or maybe like me, you decide to start your own recovery meeting. Whatever strategies you adopt, the goal is to always move forward and never backwards, because there really is a finish line in your recovery. That is when you've rebuilt your life, and now your risk of becoming an addict is no greater than anyone else. So then what? Well, that really depends on you. Maybe you're the kind of person who can forget your addiction ever happened. Or maybe you know yourself well enough to suspect that you could relapse. Maybe you need periodic maintenance in the form of meetings or counseling or volunteering to help others in recovery. Or something as simple as mindfulness or perhaps meditation. And this brings us to an important thing you should know and remember about the stages of change model. It's not perfectly linear. You may skip a stage or go back a stage from time to time. According to Dr. Carla De Clemente, the scientist who developed this model, most people will try to quit their addictive behaviors and fail several times before they get it right. But that's okay. That's to be expected. Relapses happen. The key is to learn from your slip-ups instead of letting them defeat you entirely. It's like riding a bike. You fall off the bike. So what? Get back on the bike. Hey, I hope these kinds of smart recovery exercises really help. If you've used them, we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line at tipsatools at smartrecovery.org. 
And as always, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next episode of Smart Recovery's Tips and Tools for Recovery That Works.